Hey people, I made this scene in Blender a few days ago and folks have been wondering how I did it. So that's what I'll be talking about in this video. So here we are in Blender 2.82. Um, just a default scene here with the cube, light, camera. Um, just going to select the cube and delete it. Um, going to start with some camera setup by adding an empty right here and this will help us later, you'll see how. I'm um, going to rename it Pivot, and I'm going to select the camera, then select the empty, Control p and parent it. So now when you move and rotate this, the camera is always pointing at it, and that'll help us a lot later. Next thing is to add a plane, and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees on the x-axis. And then I'm going to come over here to our modifiers, add an array modifier. I'm going to change this from relative to constant, and I think it's on the Y, no, on the Z. I'm going to do 0.1 on the Z axis, and I'm just going to turn this up right now to maybe 50, something like that. And then I'm going to add a solidify. That makes it a little easier to see, because it actually has some, some depth to it now. Next, we're going to add a displacement. Going to add a new texture right here, and we're gonna come in here and change this to clouds. Um, and right now this looks a little funky, and I'll explain why. Uh, if you go back into your modifiers and put the displacement modifier above the solidify, it will keep all the planes the same thickness. And this is important, this order right here, to get the result that we're going for. We're going to change the direction to, I think, is it Y on the local? Make sure that both of these are set to local. And right now we're not getting that jagged look that we want, and that's because our plane is only four points right now. So if we, I'm gonna shut off the solidify so it's a little easier to see. If we come in here and just add some, some loop cuts with control R, just add as many as, as you feel is necessary to get the amount of detail that you're looking for. The more you put, the smoother uh, it'll it'll end up looking at the end. And then I'm uh, going to tab out of Edit. And now we can see it is getting that jagged look that we had in my original animation. Um, if you do want it to look smoother, you can uh, go back into the texture and change the scale value up a little higher. The higher you bring it, you'll actually see that all of these are using the same displacement texture. All the waves start to look like they're connected. So we turn this up to like two, for instance. You can see that the waves carry over from one, one array to the next. Uh, and once again, that's just because of the order of these modifiers right here. I believe if we put the displacement above the array, um, they all, <laughs> yeah, each each uh, each plane actually has like the same exact displacement on it, um, which is not what we're going for. I'm actually going to change this array to be a negative value instead, because that's the way I did it before. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add another empty. I'm just going to add a sphere for now. And going to add another modifier. This one is going to be a simple deform. We're going to change this to bend. Then we're going to select that empty. Set this to 360. So we're going for like a full circle kind of look. And then we're going to select our empty and rotate that on the X uh, 90 degrees. And as you can see, it's looping back in on itself now. And if we change the position up and down of the... Uh, of that empty that's controlling it, we change the, the radius of that, that circle that is going around. There is one little thing, it loops back around, these two are, are together, and usually what I do is I just come in here. It's not exact, but I just kind of like roughly change this angle down so it, it looks a little better. That looks good. And to get the animation to loop, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select the camera pivot and just position that roughly in the center of this circle right here that we made. I'm going to split this, this view and change this to uh, the camera view. And we can just position our camera to a spot where we like it. 
that looks all right. And so now when we rotate our pivot point on the X axis, you can see it's staying in relatively the same position uh, relative to this circle that we have here. And a full 360 degrees should result in a seamless loop. So you can come into modifier stack over here, go back into displace, um, mess with the scale until it's at a spot that you like. We'll do about 0.5, that seems good. And you can tab into edit mode, A to select everything, scale it and scale it on the X axis until you can see that it's going uh, off the edges of the camera. That way you can't see the edge. If that's what you're going for, it's also a, you know, could be a cool look. And then to get that second layer, it's actually really easy. You can just uh, duplicate this. And because they're, it's using the same, the same empty to wrap around, if you select it and just move it down, I believe, it creates that second layer that I have in the video that I showed. And once again, you can tab into, whoops, you can tab into edit mode, select everything and scale it on the X until you see it's going off the edge right there. And if that's, this doesn't seem like enough detail, you can tab into edit mode and uh, subdivide it if you want. Um, and that'll give it a little more detail, but just for the tutorial, I don't think that's really necessary. Um, so I'm going to, going to set up the animation now by starting on frame zero over here. I'm going to select the pivot right here. Going to uh, insert a rotation keyframe with I, go to frame 250. Change this to negative 360, I believe makes it go in the direction we want to go uh, go in. Press I again. Um, make sure you select both of these keyframes. Press T to set the interpolation to linear. That way it's a smooth, smooth rotation. Now I'm going to move this to the side. Oh, actually, let's set up lighting first. So change this over to render view, and we're using EV right now. Going to turn the environment lighting all the way off. I have a uh, an HDRI made loaded up in there. Actually, we're going to select our camera, uh, shift S, um, cursor to selected, select our light, and shift S, selection to cursor. And that makes it snap directly on our camera right there. We're actually going to keep this uh, light selected and then select our camera and parent it to the camera. And that way, when the camera moves uh, along the pivot, the light moves with it, as you can see. And so that means the lighting, if you want the lighting to be like this, you can keep it consistent throughout the scene. Um, it kind of makes for a seamless loop. If you leave it in one spot, the lighting will get a little more dynamic, which, you know, if you're going for that, it could be a cool look also. So I'm going to select our light and just position it in a way that I think looks good. You don't want it to uh, be so high that it's going behind um, this top layer right here, otherwise you're going to get some weird shadows. That's probably good. Okay, so next we're going to uh, go into the shading tab. Make sure you're in render view over here. Um, make sure that both of these arrays are using the same material up here. Uh, my video was I just added a Musgrave texture. Control T on this. If you're using Node Wrangler, it'll add the texture coordinate and mapping. I'm just going to change this to object and I'm going to connect this to the base color so we can see it more clearly. I'm also going to shut that off for now. Um, and I believe what I did was I turned detail up all the way and dimension downward. As you can see with the Musgrave texture, the closer you get to zero, the more um, gritty and grungy it looks. Uh, where at zero, it is very small details. So I'll just set it to like 0.2 and I'm just going to turn the scale down slightly until I get to a point that looks good to me. All right, I'm going to connect that to roughness to add uh, some reflections where black would be completely smooth and white is rough. And I'm also going to add a mix RGB, connect uh, the Musgrave texture to the factor and that means that the Musgrave texture is controlling uh, the distribution of whatever these two colors are. 
So we could change these to whatever. I believe I left them grayscale, but if you wanted, you could, you know, add whatever colors you want here. You know what? I'll make it a little darker. And I think that looks all right. So now it has a little more texture to it. Um, and if you do want even more dynamic lighting, you could use an HDRI. I have a few tutorials on that already. The one that I have set up by default in my scenes is uh, Sky HDRI. Looks like this, um, where it's it's black down below. So as the camera goes around, uh, you'll notice it does get a little darker. Personally, I kind of like uh, harder shadows. So if I was using one, I would turn it down pretty low. And that's pretty much it. It's not exactly the same as my video, but all the principles are there. I encourage you to take these ideas and put a twist on it to make it your own. And if you do, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I really like seeing other people's work. Share this video if you found it helpful. It helps me a lot when you do that. And thanks for watching.